Hello. Well, thank you all. Thank you, everybody here. It's a fresh pleasure for us to be able to uh, be with you again. For me, personally, I'm very happy to come back to Lucknick after so many years and uh, to see uh, good friends again. Today, we're going to talk about a report that uh, we uh, conduct uh, every quarter in Spam House. That is a report on data of botnets that we see in the region. So we're going to give the, the presentation is going to be in English because with my friend it's easier to do that. So we'll s Okay, so um, first of all, uh, if anybody didn't recognize me <laughs> from my past life, I was that guy there that used to have a very long beard and curly mustache. <laughs> I wanted to make sure that, uh, that, uh, that you see that because I know that I look very different. It's, yeah, yeah, it's it's funny because I actually look younger now than I than I looked before, like a Benjamin Burton stuff. But uh, anyways, that um, that's me. Okay, so uh, for the ones uh, that I haven't met yet, I, I've been working with cybersecurity for since um, 2014, coming from a completely different background, not technical background. And for me, it was great to be uh, in several events and talking to people to get to understand the, the process behind, especially incident handling, and uh, looking at different sides from uh, an outside perspective, right? And one thing that I noticed from the beginning is that there's, um, there's kind of a gap between the people that notify, uh, that identify and notify about threats and people who receive the reports. It's usually kind of one blaming the other, the ones that send the notifications blaming and complaining that the ISPs don't answer, don't, don't respond, they don't do what they should be doing. And on the other side, we have the ISPs that they get the reports, and most of the times they don't have the resources or they don't have the knowledge to deal properly with that, right? So some of the idea that we have is actually to be uh, a bridge between these two, uh, these two sides, right? And try and put things together so that we can work together towards something that works for everyone, okay? I'll let uh, Matt introduce himself. Thank you, Fabricio. Uh, so I'm, I'm Matthew Stith. I'm the, uh, the industry liaison at Spam House. Uh, and in my, in my previous life, I was working at, uh, at anti-abuse desks at, uh, at, at, at a hosting company uh, before I came to the other side, which is Spam House. Uh, and you know, my, my primary uh, goal and mission at Spam House is building the partnerships, building the relationships, because the only way that we're going to solve any of the problems on the internet is by working together. We can't do all of this alone. And being at Spam House, yes, I understand that we have this, this reputation in, in some circles where we just want to block everything. That's not, that's not the case. Uh, what we really want to do is we really want to highlight the bad areas of the internet and be able to help people that are having those problems be able to solve them uh, in a expeditious fashion. Uh, so that's really what the what our goal is today. And all of the things that we're going to pre be presenting in here, yes, some of the numbers may not look great for uh, for the for the region, but we definitely want to make sure that we start having those positive, constructive conversations uh, so we can move forward and make the internet a safer place here in the Lacnic region and, of course, all over the world. So with that, I'm going to give it back to Fabricio so he can keep moving. Excellent, then. So the first thing that we would like to talk about is uh, where our data come from, right? So basically what we do is we have a huge database of, um, of data related to IPs and domains reputation, IPs and domains that are related somehow to some, uh, some bad, bad stuff, right? Some, th some threats. So uh, this information comes from different partners and resources that we have all over the world. You know, they come from ISPs, law enforcement agencies, enterprises, some certs. We have uh, our own uh, spam traps as well, and we have some researchers that collaborate into that. So all of that, what we do with that is that uh, we process that through machine learning, so, um, some uh, investigations. We have a very, very strong team of researchers that is some investigations as well, and some heuristics, so that we can transform that raw data, let's say, to something actionable, right? So to, for you to have an idea, uh, we track you know, around 3 million domains every day. You know, we press, process around more or less 18,000 samples of, uh, of malware 
We have 13.4 billion SMTP connections analyzed as well. Lots of heuristics as well. And at the end, you know, for, for, for the means of this report, especially that we're talking about in the botnets, uh, we have around 12 million botnet nodes listed every day, right? And uh, if anybody is not uh, familiar with, uh, with the botnets and uh, what it is and so on, how it works, uh, Steve will explain a bit how it works for you. Yes. So what we're looking at here is just, uh, it, this is the standard uh, configuration that, uh, that you'll see with a, uh, with a central distribution uh, botnet. So what we're looking at here with the servers with the little skulls in front of them, those represent the command and control. So those are the, the areas of the internet that have uh, a, a server with a domain that is hosting all of the instructions for the botnet. And it goes out and tries to recruit uh, bots. So what we're looking at the bottom, those are bots, the little bugs. Uh, and uh, what they do is they communicate back and forth with the command and control servers. And they get instructions on what should I be doing? Should I be participating in a DDoS? Uh, should I be sending out malware? Should I be recruiting other bots? Uh, and sometimes they do all of these things. So that's kind of how this all works together. There are multiple ways that botnets do work, but this is one of the most common, uh, and we could go on and on, but we don't have that much time. So that's essentially how those, uh, the command and control structure works. Okay, so now talk, talking about our region and what is on the, in our late, latest report from the first, first quarter of this year. Uh, unfortunately, our region is not very good uh, uh, in terms of uh, having active botnet uh, activity uh, here. We have over 60% of all the, in the, the botnet activity that we see in all, all over the world is hosted in the region. Right? So by active, we mean it was active by the time that we made the, the report, and it includes new botnets, some uh, stuff that we, that we hadn't seen before, but also stuff that had been there for a long time before, right? And we have uh, four out of the top five hosting companies located in, in the region, okay? Uh, so we are gonna be, speaking, be talking both about the new ones and the ones that were there already before. So to start with, um, this is a, a, ch a chart about uh, by country, okay? And uh, we know that our region is a very common target for the bad guys, because what's the, what they look for basically is uh, places where the, the infra internet infrastructure is good, right? So they have good connection and stuff, but the maturity level security-wise is not that good, which means that kind of they know that they're gonna be able to do stuff and uh, they won't have some much trouble, much people trying to figure out what they are doing and how they are doing and, and fix that right away, right? And that's where we are, okay? We know that at the end, you know, uh, internet is a business, right? Uh, all the, of course, we have, there are all, several other roles for the internet, but uh, when we talk about ISPs, uh, it's a business, right? Uh, and we need to think about the economical aspect of that. And, some, and most of the times it's difficult uh, to justify the costs of having a strong security operations to the higher management. This is a, a challenge that we understand and we know how it is, right? But we have to figure out together ways of trying to change that because as we can see, right, uh, we have... Uh, we have Uruguay, I don't know if you can see well, but uh, we have Uruguay here on the, the fifth place, Mexico, uh, Dominican Republic, and Brazil. Everything that's in red means that there was an increase, and everything that's in number stayed the same or reduced. So uh, we did have a, an improvement compared to the past quarter, right? If you see here in Brazil, 20% less, Mexico 12%, and Uruguay 4%. But the Dominican Republic, on the other hand, increased 16%, right? Uh, so there's still a lot of work to do, and that's exactly why we are here for. As, as Steve said, we, are not, uh, we, we want to change a bit the idea that we are the bad guys that like blocking people. We don't like blocking anybody, right? Uh, the thing is that if, the, 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 if there is a problem there, uh, our goal is to protect the people, right, from, from getting bad stuff from those infected machines or stuff like that. So uh, if we manage to, to, to solve, it's going to be even better for everyone, okay? So, 
here is uh, who is hosting your new botnets, right? uh, new bot. So this is, uh, is about new stuff that we saw only this quarter, okay? This doesn't mean that the companies that are here, that they are not uh, good at responding, uh, but it, uh, it means maybe that the process of choosing the customers, if we can say like that, could be improved, right? We know that this is not a very common practice here in the region to have vetting processes, for example. Uh, we have in other places like in Europe and North America, we have some, some places where they choose, they have a, a process that people have to go through, right, uh, when they become customers so that you can ident identify beforehand who are going to be the bad guys. It's difficult to, 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 to support that idea here in the region, we understand, right? But this is just to point out, okay? Uh, for, this, um, for this quarter, we got, we got uh, Antel from Uruguay going to the first place. Um, uh, it was uh, in the third place in the, previous, in the previous quarter. And as you can see, we have kind of five, right, out of the, the top 20, uh, um, sorry, four. Four out of the top 20 uh, companies are hosted in the place, in, in, the, in the region, okay? Uh, now, the, those, uh, those statistics now here are about the, the active botnets. So if before it was the new ones, the ones that we saw before, and as, as we said, that didn't mean that people didn't react fast enough, this one is related to active botnets, which means that some stuff that were already there before and the new ones as well. So in this, this one, you can see, again, everything that's in red means that it, uh, it, the, the numbers increased, right? So it's probably because it wasn't taken care of in the past quarter, and there was some new stuff added this quarter, okay? And it shows how much, we, uh, how much room we have for improvement uh, in, in the region again, okay? Again, it's 60% of all the botnet activity that we saw all over the world, so it's, it's a lot, okay? And... Um, and Again, we are here just to, to help. We are not here, we want you guys to understand that we are not here to point fingers, but the idea is actually that we roll up our sleeves and work together into how we can, uh, how we can address these issues so that we can make the internet safer and make it work for everyone, okay? So, Steve, how can we help? Well, there's many ways that we can help, but here's, here's a list. Like, um, like many of these, these presentations that you see, uh, when we're talking about abuse, we come out and we give you a whole list of things. These are all the things that you can do. What I want to point out with this list uh, is while we have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine on there, it doesn't mean you need to do them in that order. Uh, these are suggestions of what companies can start implementing on their network. It's not something that you need to go back to your team and say, we need to get this done in a month. Uh, I know that everybody has their own priorities and how they're going to get things set up, but these are some guidelines that you can, can stick to and put into your roadmaps, and some of them may not work for you. Like uh, there, there's the, uh, the, the blocking of, of Tor. Uh, some, some companies and some ISPs aren't able to do that, and that, that's completely understandable, but there are certain other networks that could do something like that. Uh, just to just to point out a few of those things. So the first thing that we're looking at here is, uh, is you know, when, when you're choosing your infrastructure. Now, what I mean by choosing your infrastructure, uh, since you know, I imagine in the, in the room that we have all sorts of networks, uh, but when you're choosing your infrastructure, you know, make sure you're using a registrar who has the same security in place that you do, uh, or that they have the same alignment on your access, acceptable use policies. Uh, so they're not going to be something that is going to get you compromised eventually. Uh, and you can just build that whole network and keep everything as solid for yourself. Uh, and then next, you know, authentication logs. You know, this is something that will help you identify potential badness uh, coming into your network. Uh, or if somebody is trying to attack one of your customers or one of your, uh, uh, one of your data centers or anything. Uh, and I can keep on going through and just list through this entire list, but this, this presentation is available for everyone. But, you know, let's, let's talk about updating things. Turn on automatic updates if you're able to, and I understand that updating is very difficult. Uh, we have multiple times, even within the spam house, where we'll, we'll do an update, 
and it will bring a few things down, and then we have to roll it back and keep on going on the old one until you're able to go forward with it. But the main thing to think about when we're talking about updating your software uh, or updating your even your hardware is make a plan for it. Uh, don't just wait until, uh, uh, until you just have to do it. Uh, try and say, okay, this patch came out this week and we need to make sure that it's implemented by the end of the month. Uh, that's a suggestion of something that you can do. Uh, and then, you know, we talk about things like two-factor authentication. Uh, you know, make sure that you make it more difficult for the, uh, for the bad people to get into uh, your environments. Uh, and again, I'm gonna just keep moving forward with, uh, with this so we can get to the, the thing that I really wanna talk about. And that's what Spam House offers to the community. So we have free tools available. And one, one thing that Spam House has always wanted to be able to do is give things to back to the community. Um, I, and you know, I understand that we do have this little commercial aspect, but we definitely want to concentrate on the free things that are able to be accessed by, uh, by people. Go to the next. So you know, these are some of the things that we offer up completely for free. Uh, you, know, you do have to... Uh, fall into certain, uh, certain aspects uh, in, in terms of how, uh, how things are done. But uh, for example, that, that free data query service. So what that does is that's something that checks our reputational lists. Uh, and it is meant for the smaller, uh, the smaller individuals. Uh, so maybe it's a, uh, an IT consulting firm who has 10 users on it. Uh, there's somebody who would fall perfectly into that, that type of realm. And this is something that, uh, you know, you as some of the larger networks, it's something that you can offer uh, to your users. And this is something where we're not going to be contacting you about commercial opportunities, uh, and we're just going to be providing this data to you. Um, and that's just so people can protect themselves uh, from, from all of the badness that's out there. And that first thing on there is, is DNS firewall or DNS RPZ, which may be more familiar with people. Uh, and, uh, what that does is that's something that blocks, uh, bad traffic from going out, uh, or somebody who may be connecting to something that is bad. Uh, and, you know, it's a, it's something that we want to be able to offer to you with no, no strings attached to it other than creating an account with Spam House. So, next slide, please. So, a, n a couple other things. Uh, and I don't know how many people have dealt with Spam House, and I hope not, I don't want to have everybody raise their hands. But, uh, you know, I, I, I know that, you know, in some cases it can be frustrating, it can be difficult, uh, especially when you're blocked. And that's why we have launched this, this IP and domain reputation checker. Uh, and what this does is it provides you additional information uh, that you may not have been getting before. If you, if you would have been looking at Spam House uh, about a year and a half ago, you probably wouldn't have been seeing anything like this. And we're trying to provide additional information to users so they're able to find out where the problems are coming from and how that they can stop them. Uh, and that you know, is a tool that we're constantly tweaking and evolving and trying to make sure that we provide more information to the internet community so you're able to stop some of the problems that you may be having. Next on here is, uh, is our block list tester. So going back to talking about that data query service which queries our reputational lists, uh, this thing will be able to help you properly configure. Uh, that's, a, that's a challenge when sometimes you're, you're new to, uh, to the internet or new to email. Uh, and are trying to figure out how to use that data to effectively block things. Uh, so this thing will let you plug in your, your information and it will test against uh, your configuration, let you know if everything is going well. And if there's a problem, it'll give you a little bit of information on, now you maybe had this wrong or something else wrong there. Uh, and then the last thing is the reputation portal. Now, this is something that uh, I would love for, uh, for any network of, uh, of, of big size at this time. We're, we're looking, uh, when we're looking to be launching this sometime in the, in the next few months, uh, we have started a beta process, but uh, we've already closed that off, unfortunately. 
but uh, you know, this is going to be for networks to be able to monitor their reputation. So you can provide, uh, you provide Spam House what your ASN is, and we're able to give you all of the IPs uh, that, uh, that we see in there, and if anything is listed in there. Uh, and it's something that is going to have an API that you're going to be able to access and be able to see. These are all the IPs that are listed. These are the bots. Uh, this is when we first saw it, and this is when we last saw it. Uh, so it will help you be able to understand a little bit more of when we kind of saw when a problem was happening and what we think the problem may be. Uh, and another piece to it is that IP and domain reputation check piece is also living within that reputation portal. So you'll be able to do removals. You'll be able to uh, process, you know, through your network. And it's something that, uh, you know, you'll be able to bring in and you could make a process within your, your abuse desks to be able to better manage that reputation. Yeah, on that side, I have to say that um, we know how painful it is when, uh, when the ISPs get blocked, right? Uh, we have kind of almost every day people, almost now every day we have people reaching out. And one thing that I want to make clear that we don't take any money to remove anybody from lists, right? Uh, some people have this idea that, oh, no, you have to pay them. And some people come and ask, how much do you have to pay to get removed? The thing is that you can go there and request the removal right away. The thing is that if the problem is not solved, you're going to be, be listed again, right? There is no other solution for that other than solving the problem that's causing the blocking, right? So what we can do is provide information about the IP that has the problem and the kind of problem that you have. What we are looking for now, and this is uh, that here I, I just throw the invitation for everyone, is we want to try and figure out ways of helping the ISPs solve the problem internally because we know that most of the times, especially the small ones, like kind of a, uh, uh, like it was said here in the, the opening uh, uh, on, on Tuesday, right? In Brazil, we have about 17,000 small ISPs, right? And we know that sometimes it's that very tiny guy that saw a business uh, uh, opportunity and started the business. They don't, they don't have a, a, a security background. They don't have the resources. It's the same guy that puts, puts the cable and answers the phone, and you cannot call them during lunchtime because they are preparing the food for the kids, right? We know that this is the reality of the region. So what can we do to help everybody on that? And that's where we want insight from you guys, right? Because what we can do, again, we can show what the problem is. We can uh, tell you uh, what kind of problem it is. But how to solve the problem, I think we need to adjust for, for the reality of the community. So that, I think, it's a very, a very good uh, collaborative uh, uh, project that we can start here. And that uh, we are wishing that you guys come to us so that we can adapt to the, to the, to the reality. Nobody better than you to tell how things could work for, for you, okay? So, and for that, we'd like to leave, to leave you here. I know it's very easy to find us. You can go to our website. Uh, at our website, at Spam House, we have content in Spanish and Portuguese, not only about the solutions, but there's a part that says Resource Center, uh, Center of the Recursos. In Portuguese, uh, Centro de Recursos, I guess. I can't remember how it's written there. But anyways, you can find it where you have uh, the report that we have. And we also have uh, all the other stuff. You know, we have some best practices. We have some case studies that can help as well, some tutorials as well, that can help you build this knowledge. And, uh, and if you have any ideas about content as well that we can be creating. Uh, actually, we have a slide with the... the the web. Well, we will talk about the report. Let me. This is where you can find the the, the resources. Okay. Uh, so if you have any ideas of content that uh, you believe we could produce that would be good, uh, or anything, if you want to, to to collaborate and maybe we can make a joint content where you are going to bring your expertise and then put together with some of the data or some expertise that we have to 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 build something that you believe would be interesting for the the community, come and reach out to us. Okay. And, uh, and yeah, and these, uh, the, the full report that we talked about, okay, uh, because the data that we talked about today is within the report, but there's much more on that, right? We have some, uh, some, speci some specifics about the whole world, talking about the geolocation, you know, the malware family that we, that we find, you know, top level domains, uh, and all kinds of stuff. You can find that at the, 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 the resource center. That, let me go back now here. There you go, here, and, and much more. And, um, yeah, that's what we had for, for today. Thank you very much.
uh, for being here, and I really hope that this is just the beginning of a long-term partnership that we want to have, not only with LACNOC, but with the whole LACNIC community. For me, as I said, you know, it's, it's a pleasure to be back here, and I'm very happy to be, to be back in a position where I can see that I can do much more that, uh, than what I could do before. And I'd like to thank uh, for the invitation, especially to Carlos, that, uh, that arranged everything for, for us to be here today. And yeah, we are open for questions if you guys have questions. Thank you. Uh, many, uh, many thanks, both of you, for your excellent presentations. Uh, let's see if there, we have any comments or questions here in, in the room or in the chat. So, alguna pregunta? So, any questions? Any questions for Fabricio? We won't charge for asking. So, make the most of it. The Span House people are here. So you can touch them. We have them here. They are real. They are the Spam House people. Any questions? Anybody interested in asking questions? Here we have a, a brave guy. Of course? Yeah. OK, thank you. Uh, Internet providers, we've, we've seen the statistics in Mexico, etc., and we've seen how botnets are. But I think that an added value that you could give in the ISP networks is to offer not so much an antivirus to the end consumer, but an EDR or EPDR this endpoint protection, detection, and response. That is, in terms for you to offer them an added value to your end users, and you may avoid not just uh, the botnets, but also uh, ensuring a safe, uh, secure browsing. I think that's business that we are all uh, leaving aside, because not with an antivirus, but uh, with an EPDR, the so-called EPDR. What do you think about that? Give me a second. I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear my voice in my head. Uh, so uh, it is something that we have been talking about: is providing those those plugins and and things that, that users uh, and networks just can can apply. Uh, and the thing that we have been developing within within our uh, system is uh, essentially being able to let our data be used in any format or any any types of way possible. Uh, the thing that we have been developing recently and are still working on it is an API. And that API can be used for tools. So if somebody connects to a site, it can check the API and say, is this listed as a negative reputation? Or if the IP that it resolves to is a negative reputation, you can, uh, you can end up blocking it or uh, end up redirecting it. So you can let them understand uh, you, know, you clicked on a link and it went to uh, it, it was going to a phishing website or a malware website and it can give you that additional information this is a uh, this is a that is a uh, uh, an outcome of that API it's not something that spam house themselves are going to be building uh, but I would love to be able to talk about partnerships and integrating like that uh, to be able to add that type of value. Uh, and that's, that is a piece that we are also trying to really concentrate on, is to be able to integrate with people and find out where we need to put our data into that stream so they can most effectively use it to protect their users, their employees, and themselves, et cetera. Sí, eso es un tema porque hay dos yes, that's an issue because there are two things that we need to try to solve because we have proactive and reactive uh, work. Basically, what we have is data, and th those data, we have some formats that we put in packets for and different ways to use them. But we're always looking for uh, additional alternatives. We are specialists in this part, and this is what we do well, and it's not that we have the idea of moving away from that or changing it too much. It's data. But as Steve said, we are always trying to be in touch and to integrate and be together so that the data may be used in uh, different tools. So for us, it's a good thing to have uh, this type of feedback because that opens our heads 
and our minds to see where else could the data be used. And uh, the best way we can do it is to have your feedback so that we can uh, think it over and continue to work. Thomas Lynch. Okay, uh, just one question. Can you update your presentation that you uploaded in Laglock because there's an old presentation and there are no tools there? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll, uh, I'll send to Carlos the, the new one, yeah. Okay. Uh, ¿algún otro Any other questions or comments? On the Zoom, asking for about the URLs, uh, it's, it's not working, but just check it later. Okay, the URLs need to be checked. What, the, the new, the, the I don't know, we'll check them. Okay. Sure oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll make sure everything works. Okay. Yeah, just make sure that they, they get to us, absolutely. We're gonna, we, okay, we can check. Okay, check it later, because yeah, yeah. someone is trying to access absolutely. to any okay. of the tools to show Yeah, it. no problem at all. Oh, and by the way, for the presentation, we are gonna be sending the updated one, but maybe it's good to keep the older one as well, because the older one was related to the last quarter of last year, right? So you can compare, and you can see both. Okay. Uh, there is uh, enough time for one more question. I'd like to know whether uh, the, in your work you found in Latin America and in general any cyber attacks that are strictly related with political issues such as uh, the uh, Cambridge Analytics and uh, that sort of thing and what would be the actions. Well, really, we don't uh, pay attention to where it's coming or what kind of thing. It's not that we select or that we act upon uh, something depending on where it comes from or what kind of attack it is and that sort of thing. As I said, what we look at is IPs and domains that have bad things. That's it. That's a topic, but especially today, now with what's happening in Ukraine and Russia, we can't uh, take uh, say what side we are. We need to focus on having data, good quality, and that we know that uh, there are uh, actors that are bad. Now, what they're doing, why they're doing it, that's not uh, up to us. And we have uh, data that if somebody wants, for instance, uh, if uh, somebody will investigate that, well, you have to deal with other people or other organizations or whatever. What we have is uh, factual data. That's what we do. It, the, the other thing to think about is uh, there's there's been questions of if uh, if I'm a if I'm using a specific uh, TLD, uh, will I will I end up getting myself blocked? No, it's not who you are. It's what you do. Uh, that uh, that is where we're going to be looking at things, uh, and you know when it comes to things like political actors and whatnot, uh, you know it's really if it's abusive, it's going to be something that it will fall under our radar and we will be able to see it. Uh, and uh, you know we, it's it's not a it's not a case of uh, of if it's something that may be legal in in some country or not. Uh, things like buying lists. Uh, we've, we've had people come to us and say that's not illegal and we're like it may not be in your country but it's spamming it's you're sending things to people who don't want them uh, and you need to follow these kinds of best common practices do do consent correctly uh, so you know again it's not who you are it's what you do yeah, and, and we basically follow international standards for that, right? So it's not, uh, it's something that uh, we are in touch with the internet community. Actually, Spam House started, you know, and has been uh, uh, exchanging information with the internet community for the past 20 years. And that's exactly that, because we want to make something that's the standard, and that's the way it works everywhere, right? And if those standards and, and rules change, uh, that's, uh, that's how we adapt. Yeah, okay. We want to thank both uh, speakers. We've run out of time. So a round of applause for them for their presentation. Thank you.